to Undisputed. We are live from LA. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless oh. and Shannon Sharp. Good morning. Oh. What's happening? Oh. The NBA has a new face. Move over, LeBron. Your history. Don't do that. I thought Kawhi was the face. Zion just took the whole league over last night. I'm sorry, it's over, LeBron. Hold on, we, we do we, we shout and get mm. pom poms out and mm. get popcorn for L's? Mm. I don't serve popcorn at my uh, restaurant. Mm. I don't serve when you come uh, get the L's. You don't get no popcorn. If that man could have finished that game, the L would have been no, on my spurs. No, 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 I'm no, sorry. No, no. I don't, I don't you know, know what, it, and I know. I don't know what he could have done or should have done. I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're gonna get there. We have a huge show today. Should the 49ers thank Bill Belichick for their trip? to the Super Bowl, yep. and will Eli Manning end up in the Hall of Fame when it's all said and done? But first, we do have to start with the guy that we all watched last night, Zion Williamson's debut. The number one overall pick did not disappoint in his first game with the Pelicans, dropping 22 points in only 18 minutes, including a wild stretch of 17 straight points in the fourth quarter that included Four threes and some impressive post moves. Zion would then be pulled for the final stretch because of a minutes restriction, and the Spurs would go on to win 121 to 117. New Orleans fans were left chanting, We want Zion, a plea that head coach Alvin Gentry definitely hurt. Take a listen. And no, he couldn't go back in the game. Okay, so that don't don't go there. All right. Just because the medical people said that was it. Uh, it's very hard. Uh, you know, I'm 19, honestly. In that moment, I'm not thinking about longevity. I'm thinking about winning that game. So it's very, it was very tough. Just the energy the crowd brought, um, the energy the city brought. Um, it was electric, and you know, I'm just grateful that they did that. So it was a dream come true to finally get out there, but at the end of the day, I didn't want to win. So I just got to look the next game. Mm. Wants to win as well, mm. Shannon. Mm. How impressed were you by his debut? I was shocked by it, Skip, given that the that he was only going to play probably about 20 minutes. And you know you get 20 minutes in four quarters, Skip. It's hard to catch a, a rhythm. Mm -hmm. You play three minutes here, you play four minutes there, you play five minutes, you play another three. And so it was hard for him to get a rhythm. If you think about it, Skip, he only took three shots in the first three quarters. Mm -hmm. He's a, he, Sports are about rhythm. And you hear guys talk about it all the time. I got a rhythm early, I got going early, and, and everything flowed after that. And so he wasn't in a rhythm. And then the start of the fourth, all of a sudden, he found that rhythm. And so I was shocked, Skip. I, I think my stat line was like, 10, I thought he'd have 10 points, six rebounds, two dunks, two blocks. Um, so I was shocked with how well he played and the amount of time that he played. But I think the most shocking things were the threes, Skip. We never saw this at Duke. Now, moving forward, I'm not so sure they're going to let him have shoot-around open threes. Hmm. I think the guys will probably – I'm not saying you got to guard him like Steph Curry – and Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson, but it's hard for me to imagine that guys are going to leave him seven, eight, nine, ten feet open to shoot a three like he's shooting and shoot around. So that, but I was surprised. Um, what I wasn't surprised to see, Skip, is that he's going to get those effort plays. A loose ball around the basket, oh, he's going to grab that and go back up so quick. He missed one. I mean, he can bounce. He can leave the floor, miss a shot, come down, back up again, as, qu as good as anybody, as quick as anybody that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't surprised. They throw him a lob, Skip. He's over the top of everybody. That didn't surprise me. Him getting a ball in a, in a, in a, in a close, restricted area, quick move to the basket, that didn't surprise me. The three surprised me in how they came, considering that he was not in a rhythm early. So I'm not going to overreact. Now, this is not Steph Curry or Kevin Durant or Klay Thompson shooting threes. Let's not overreact. This is not going to be a big part of his ball game. But what he did show, if you leave me open by five, six, eight feet, I'm going to shoot this shot. They're gonna, it's going to kind of be like LeBron skill. What did what, what he do? Play off him until he can consistently make it. Well, that's what they're going to do with, uh, uh, with uh, this kid here, Zion. But I was impressed. You have to, it's hard not to be impressed. To get 17 points, straight points. In that little bit of time when you don't have a rhythm, just goes to show you once he gets his legs, more up under him. He gets his win, more up under him, and he gets to playing in, in that type of a, a, a setting. Yeah, he, he can be, the, uh, Skip, I never questioned the guy's ability. You know what I questioned. And last night was probably a sample, a very small sample of what this young man is capable of. Mm. Mm. My turn. Yes. I wasn't just surprised by what happened in the fourth quarter. I was all 
time shock. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything quite like mm -hmm. what I witnessed in a three-minute span of the fourth quarter of that game last night. Because through three quarters, to your point, Zion Williamson had been a literally huge disappointment. He was. Yeah. He had been 285 pounds, and I'm probably being generous there <laughs> in, on the low end. He had been 285 pounds of letdown. I... I I was so disappointed that I, I wanted to turn it off, but I knew I had to hang in because I thought maybe Alvin and the medical people would give him one last little run in the fourth yeah. quarter right. of a game that was completely out of hand at that point, thanks mostly to the Pelicans who weren't quite ready for that primetime game because the game for the rest of the Pelicans felt to them like it was a playoff game because the whole NBA world had tuned in to watch them. Correct. And they weren't quite yet up to that task because they've been on a little bit of a roll here yeah. lately, and my Spurs were rolling over them. So what had I seen through three quarters? I saw Zion. Not much. I, I saw him be out of sync, maybe a little bit out of shape. A I, lost. I saw a tentative. I mm -hmm. saw a little confidence. I saw joy less from a kid who's always so joyful when he plays. Correct. And Alvin said in his interview in game, God, he just playing so conservatively. I'm trying to get him out of that. Right. And I'm thinking five points with four ugly turnovers through three quarters, <laughs> not much of a start. And so I had already tweeted, we're just going to have to be patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nope, no, <laughs> then that happened. I haven't seen an explosion like that, and you'll say I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. This is from my heart. I haven't seen an explosion like that in three minutes since MJ and Kobe were in their primes, and I'll tell you why. This is a three-minute domination that features inside as well as outside. Remember, Clay Thompson holds the all-time one-quarter NBA record. He, he scored 30. somehow 37 uh -huh. points in a quarter uh -huh. back in 2015 against Sacramento at Golden State. Mm -hmm. Yet, what was that? It was all catch-and-shoot, heat-check three-point shots that are extraordinary, where you just say, that's impossible. Right. But it's just pew, 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 yep. right? Yep. This was both ways, right. inside and outside. Mm -hmm. And it was only three minutes, and it was only 17. Wait, he scored 17 in three minutes? Well, do the math. That's only one-fourth of the quarter. Right. Well, if you do four times 17, <laughs> that's, that's 68 points in the quarter. 68 points in a quarter. Again, we're, I'm, I'm extrapolating right, out right. into to madness. Right. But, mm -hmm. but that's what he accomplished, and it felt like, a one-man Mardi Gras to me, where he just took over the whole game yeah. physically, mentally, emotionally, inside, outside. Yeah. And it felt like he took the rookie of the year lead in three minutes. That's what, and I know, Jaw has been extraordinary. Right. I love Jaw. You love Jaw. But this was a whole nother level from Ja Morant. This was, wait a second, this is a display, as you know, of power and finesse. Mm -hmm. Of, of just e extreme explosion and, and athleticism and touch right. and veteran vision, because he's got veteran. He's got, remember, he played point guard in high school. Correct. So he's got veteran vision, and he's still got, once he got into the rhythm and the flow, he, he's got this childlike energy and joy and desire mm -hmm. to play where where it's just explosive desire, like a little kid with a new toy. Mm -hmm. Well, last night was a kid with a new toy because, <sighs> remember, the, the, the whole world was watching him. And what I loved about him at Duke and I loved about him last night, did he shrink in the moment? Well, I thought for three quarters, maybe he was shrinking. Yeah. Uh, guess what? <laughs> he is at his greatest when the lights get brightest. And all of a sudden, we looked up, and the Spurs had gone from 15 up to one down. Mm -hmm. When he left the game, they're, they're, up a they're up a point. How did you do that? The Spurs aren't great this year. Obviously, they're just sort of fighting for the eighth spot like the Pelicans are about to fight for the eighth spot. I think the Pelicans will wind up in the eighth spot. But the point was that the Spurs are pretty good, and he, he rendered them a bunch of little kids. That's what they look like, just ragdolled all over the place. And if we could go to the play that first caught my eye, this started the explosion. What did I tell you yesterday? I predicted that Zion would 
would dunk, he would posterize my buddy, my buddy, Jakob Pertl. Jakob. Yeah. Jacob. Oh, Jakob. <laughs> and so watch what Zion does to Jakob to start this run. Watch, watch what happens here. Okay, this is, oh, that's the block. Okay, so this is, okay, Jakob blocked his shot. There's, there's a play before this, right. actually. But, but, okay, Jakob blocks his shot, and to your point, he just goes whoosh. And here's the other play where th this started the run. This is with nine minutes left. Patty misses, and Jakob's got the rebound. He's got position inside. He's seven feet, one inches tall, and Zion goes and snatches it over his head, then dribbles the ball up the floor, and with a two-hand chest pass, feeds each one more for the easy deuce. Look at this. Look, look you, you want to talk about explosion? <laughs> he went oh. up over a seven foot one guy without fouling him. Yeah. I didn't think it was a foul. He just no. went up and yeah. snatched yeah. it yeah. over his wow. head. And I'm saying, what? Jakob, that's your ball. That's your put back. And then he goes the other way and leads the break like a point guard. Look at that pass. Was that not on? That, that's dropping can, a dime. He can pass for a big man. Like you said, he played point guard the better. He did. High school. He did.